Virgin Galactic, the space tourism firm that hopes to send its first customers to space next year, unveiled a new spacecraft design on Tuesday. Named VSS Imagine, the first in the Spaceship 3 line of spacecraft, it represents an upgrade from the current Spaceship 2 vehicle called VSS Unity. The updated space plane is designed to be more easily manufactured and to be durable enough to help the company achieve its goal of flying 400 trips to suborbital space each year. According to Virgin Galactic, the new vehicle has been optimized to limit the mass of its structure and therefore the overall weight of the vehicle. In addition to a lower overall mass, the Spaceship 3 line of vehicles also sports a flashier appearance with a mirror-like exterior. This will reflect the surrounding environment as the spacecraft ascends to a peak altitude above 80 kilometers and helps with thermal protection. The company anticipates a performance increase that will allow Spaceship 3 to carry six passengers on short suborbital flights, whereas Spaceship 2 can carry only four customers in its main cabin. Virgin Galactic also switched to a more modular approach for building Spaceship 3. With Spaceship 2, the company built up the vehicle in a single cradle, starting with the wings and then adding the cabin and other components. With Spaceship 3, different components of the vehicle can be built in parallel and then assembled into the final vehicle. Flight tests of the new vehicle are expected to begin this summer. The flight test program for Spaceship 3 will begin with its captive carry flight on the White Knight 2 aircraft from Mojave to Spaceport America. The company plans a handful of glide flights, particularly to test a vibration or flutter of the structure and compare it to Spaceship 2, followed by rocket-powered flights. According to Richard Branson, founder of Virgin Galactic, spaceships are explicitly built to deliver a new transforming perspective to the thousands of people who will soon be able to experience the wonder of space for themselves. The private venture that purchased a SpaceX Crew Dragon flight to low Earth orbit has finalized the crew for that mission, scheduled to launch as soon as September. The Inspiration4 mission, which describes itself as the world's first all-civilian mission to space, revealed the crew that will accompany its sponsor, Jared Isaacman. One of those people is Sian Proctor, a scientist and educator who has participated in several terrestrial analog astronaut missions. She won the seat called Prosperity by establishing an online store through Isaacman's company, Shift4 Payments. The second is Chris Sombrowski, a Lockheed Martin employee in the Seattle area. He won the generosity seat by participating in a sweepstakes that raised money for St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. The fourth member of the crew is Haley Arsenault, a physician assistant at St. Jude Hospital, who as a child was treated for bone cancer there. At 29, Arsenault would be the youngest American in space. The four will start training as a group immediately. The training includes time and crew dragon simulators, going through all aspects of the mission, as well as centrifuges to simulate the accelerations of launch and re-entry and other forms of stress testing. After launching from Kennedy Space Center in Florida, the spacecraft will remain in orbit for three days, flying in a 540 km orbit at an inclination of 51.6 degrees. The Inspiration4 mission will use the Dragon spacecraft called Resilience, which is currently docked at the ISS for the Crew-1 mission. Besides refurbishing the spacecraft, SpaceX will install an additional window on the spacecraft before the flight. This viewing port will replace the docking adapter under the spacecraft's nose cone. The window will allow the crew members to get a 360-degree view of their surroundings. Check out our previous video to know more about the Inspiration4 mission. Link in the description. For the first time in over a decade, the European Space Agency is seeking new astronauts to support the future of European space exploration. ESA is looking for four to six career astronauts and 20 reserve astronauts. The reserve astronauts will operate similarly to reserve members of the military, only being called when a specific mission or project requires it. This is something that's completely new for us, said David Parker, Director of Human and Robotic Exploration at ESA. To be considered, applicants need a master's degree in medicine, natural sciences, engineering, mathematics, or computer sciences. A master's level degree as an experimental test pilot or test engineer will also be accepted. It's not essential to have a PhD or second master's degree, but it also doesn't hurt. Applicants need to have at least three years of postgraduate professional experience, speak English fluently, and have good knowledge of a second language. A medical certificate from an aviation medical practitioner is also on the application checklist. 
The list of job duties includes participation in microgravity simulations, flight operations, intensive training, physical exertion, working with an intercultural and interdisciplinary team, as well as frequent travel, irregular hours, and being away from home. The opportunity to become an ESA astronaut is rare and highly competitive. ESA last sought applicants for astronaut positions in 2008 and has held only three recruitment rounds, including its first in 1978. This time there is a new opportunity for astronaut, hopefuls thanks to the introduction of a Perastronaut feasibility project. To help increase the accessibility of spaceflight for all qualified Europeans, ESA is seeking candidates living with a specific physical disability to help assess the technologies and adaptations required to one day send an astronaut with a physical disability on a professional space mission. The applications are being accepted from 31st March to 28th May. The selection process consists of six key stages, and the result will be announced in October 2022. Check out the link in the description to learn more about the selection process. Astronomers have detected X-rays from Uranus for the first time using NASA's Chandra X-ray Observatory. In the new study, researchers used Chandra observations taken in 2002 and then again in 2017. They saw a clear detection of X-rays from the first observation that they just analyzed recently and a possible flare of X-rays in those obtained 15 years later. The main graphic shows a Chandra X-ray image of Uranus from 2002 marked in pink, superimposed on an optical image from the Keck-1 telescope, obtained in a separate study in 2004. While the authors of the new Uranus study initially expected that most of the X-rays detected would be from the scattering of sunlight by Uranus's atmosphere, there are tantalizing hints that at least one other source of X-rays is present. One possibility is that the rings of Uranus are producing X-rays themselves. Uranus is surrounded by charged particles such as electrons and protons in its nearby space environment. If these energetic particles collide with the rings, they could cause the rings to glow in X-rays. Another possibility is that at least some of the X-rays come from auroras on Uranus, a phenomenon that has previously been observed on Earth at other wavelengths. Scientists hope that future observations by Chandra may help determine what's happening at Uranus. The paper describing these results appears in the most recent issue of the Journal of Geophysical Research and is available online. Now, let's discuss some of the major Starship updates from the past week. Completely cloaked in a thick layer of fog, SpaceX Starship prototype serial number 11 lifted off from SpaceX's test facility at Starbase Boca Chica on March 30. The launch took off following a 24-hour delay. The flight attempt on March 29 was abruptly called off because the Federal Aviation Administration inspector for the test flight was unable to reach Starbase in time for launch. The delay was caused by a communication breakdown between SpaceX and FAA. Ultimately the test flight was moved to Tuesday. On Tuesday, the rocket had a seemingly nominal ascent, reaching an altitude of 10 kilometers around 4 minutes after launch. Aside from a few intermittent fires burning on some of the rocket's three Raptor engines, nothing appeared particularly out of the ordinary during ascent. After reaching its apogee, SN11 arced over onto its belly and free fell for approximately 100 seconds. At T plus 5 minutes and 49 seconds, SN11 attempted to reignite all three Raptor engines to propulsively flip into a vertical landing position. After at least one seemingly successful reignition, SpaceX immediately lost onboard video and telemetry feeds. A substantial explosion followed one or two seconds after that attempted ignition, ending Starship SN11's test flight. Debris began to visibly hit the ground another 5 to 10 seconds after that explosion was first heard, guaranteeing that Starship SN11 exploded in mid-air. Shortly after, SpaceX CEO Elon Musk said that Raptor engine number 2 had issues on ascent and didn't reach operating chamber pressure during landing burn. But that was not enough to explain a violent mid-air failure, and he confirmed that whatever went wrong came shortly after the landing burn. RGV aerial photography conducted an aerial flyover hours after the anomaly, capturing the debris of the explosion. The wreckage was mainly concentrated on the northern portion of the launch site. The lighter debris went farther after the explosion, with one of the debris landed at about 817 meters from the landing pad. The heavier pieces of SN11's wreckage were seen lying next to the launch pad. The nose cone was spotted close to highway number 4, and the three Raptor engines of SN11 landed next to the Starhopper. 
The engine skirt with the rocket's landing legs can be spotted near the SpaceX control center, which is currently under construction. The landing pad looks unharmed after the explosion in this aerial shot. The presence of a large number of small debris around the test site suggests that SN11 suffered a substantial failure during that reignition and flip attempt, triggering an internal explosion that tore the rocket apart. The debris size and their landing pattern make it less likely that the flight termination system automatically triggered the explosion. Within an hour after the anomaly, Mr. Musk revealed that SpaceX intends to complete and roll Starship SN15 to the launch pad within few days. Did you think I need to pack this in? Never. Why not? I don't ever give up. I mean, I'd have to be dead or completely incapacitated. While the SpaceX CEO didn't go much into detail, he reaffirmed that SN15 would bring substantial upgrades, stating that it has hundreds of design improvements across structures, avionics, software, and engines. He added that Starship prototypes from SN20 onwards would be orbit-capable, with heat shield and stage separation system. According to him, future Starship prototypes will probably need many flight attempts to survive Mach 25 entry heating. In a separate update, Elon Musk announced that he will donate $30 million to Cameron County Schools and the city of Brownsville. He added that additional details would come next week. Additionally, Musk plans to alleviate some energy concerns in the area by partnering with Magic Valley Utility, which will supply the region with clean wind power. Musk also said that Tesla and SpaceX are attempting to increase solar power by tenfold. In his recent tweet, Mr. Musk encourages people to move to Texas thanks to all the new jobs set to become available at SpaceX. They currently have over 100 temporary and full-time job openings on its website, located in Brownsville, Texas. Moving to other Starship updates, SpaceX has rapidly begun building the first of two planned skyscraper-sized Starship launch towers that will support Starship orbital flights. The Orbital Launch Tower Foundation has been encased in concrete, and the framework for the massive base is nearly ready for its first concrete pour. Recently a gigantic heavy-duty crane arrived at Boca Chica to support Orbital Launch Tower construction. At the build site, work on Starship serial number 15 rapidly restarted in an apparent bid to achieve Musk's stated goal of rolling the rocket to the launch pad in a few days. SN-15's tank section, which has been stacked to its full height about a month ago, was rolled out of Boca Chica's mid-bay assembly building and installed both aft flaps before moving the vehicle into the high bay. The day after SN-11 exploded, SpaceX stacked the last two pieces of Starship SN-15's nose cone and joined their plumbing and avionics runs, more or less completing the upper third of the prototype. On Friday, workers stacked this nose cone atop the tank section of SN-15, completing the prototype assembly. A recent public notice of Cameron County ordered a temporary closure of State Highway 4 and Boca Chica Beach on April 5. The rollout of SN-15 could happen as early as Monday. On Saturday, ahead of the rollout of SN-15, SpaceX transported a thrust simulator from the build site to the launch site. The thrust simulator was then installed onto the suborbital launch pad A. It will be used to test the new thrust puck design on Starship SN-15. The white mystery structure, which was previously thought to be a stand to transport booster BN-1, now got a nose cone inside its cage. Two handle-like structures can be seen on either side of the nose cone. This may be a test rig build for ground tests. Recently a new ground support tank has been stacked at the production site. SpaceX has previously assembled a GSE tank at the construction site, which is currently inside the midbay. The aft dome of Super Heavy Booster BN2 was spotted at the construction site last week. According to Elon Musk, Booster BN1 is a manufacturing pathfinder that will be scrapped, and the goal is to get BN2 with engines on the orbital pad before the end of April. If all goes according to the plan, it might even be orbit capable. SpaceX has already begun the construction of their third Super Heavy Booster prototype. The forward dome and common dome of Booster BN3 were spotted at the build site last week. With this, we have covered all the major updates from last week. Please share your thoughts on the latest science news and Starship updates in the comments section. Also, do not forget to subscribe to the channel for more weekly updates. And as always, thanks for watching.